So welcome everybody and thank you very much for attending this Airbus webinar. I do hope that you did not come in order to see a tractor fly, although it could be uh, something our company decide to do one day because they already started to make a car fly. So, but uh, sorry, there will be no flying tractor today. Actually, we are Airbus Intelligent. We are the part of Airbus dealing with satellite imagery. And um, it is funny to see that, in fact, we are the oldest satellite operator for remote sensing on Earth. Um, back in time then, when you wanted an image, you should uh, write us uh, or uh, call us or send a, a fax, a telex. And then we would task the satellite, especially for you, to collect exactly the image where you wanted and when you needed it. And at that time, you had to figure out that there was no Google Earth. So it was a kind of uh, super cool and a bit uh, science fiction. Actually, you are already very numerous in precision agriculture to use already satellite imagery to serve your customers. Um, the reason for this is that satellites are, are particularly convenient for crop monitoring. First, they can image globally, which is perfectly matching the pattern of agriculture as it is very scattered all around the planet. Second, there are no more and more satellites in orbit, and they bring a revisit capacity that is now fit for the growth speed of the field. And third, satellite imagery cost is rather low in comparison to other acquisition means, and that is essential given the pressure on farms' profitability. Yet, even if you do not need any more a white coat in my company, managing satellite imagery remains somewhat heavy. Clouds are a real pain point, and it's not always easy to properly mask them and mask their shadows. More, it's not easy to clip an image exactly to the field, especially if we are talking about thousands and thousands of them. Besides, satellites feature different revisit rates, different resolution, different bands, and worse, different spectral responses. As we are the oldest satellite operator, we have been very early running into this inconsistency as we started to combine imagery from several satellites in order to answer our customers' requests. That is why we invested heavily in developing a processing chain delivering consistent results regardless of the sensor we would use. The other driver for us was to go further in terms of added value. To be able to stitch together satellite images and agronomy we needed an accurate measure of vegetation status. Our approach actually relies on reflectance modeling in order to calculate key biophysical parameters. Those are physically describing vegetation. They are based on a chain of different models. The first one is the topography. The second is a model to render the optical properties of soil. The third is a model of the vegetation in order to integrate the canopy architecture. We also take into account the atmosphere and a model of the sensor and of its spectral bands. And all this works regardless of the satellite we use to capture the image. Now, Verde, it's a topic of today's presentation. This is the API that serves you all these analytics straight to your portal and clip to the field. You have the choice between three different analytics. The first one is called the green cover fraction, the F cover. It features the percentage of the surface of the ground covered by the crop seen from above. And that specific analytic is great if you have a limited budget or if you don't know the crop type. The second uh, indicator is called leaf area index, LAI and it features the number of square meters of green leaves present in one square meter of ground. And that one is extremely powerful for agriculture because it's very highly correlated to biomass. The last analytic we will provide, with, we provide <laughs> since today with Verde, is actually the chlorophyll content, content per unit area of leaves. And this one is in direct correlation with leaf age, plant nutrition, and stress. So we will start a quick survey 
to uh, check what is the layer that it that has the biggest interest for you. Is it F cover one or chlorophyll or leaf area index? So you may submit your answer, please. I will wait more seconds to allow everyone to, um, to answer if you wish to. Perfect, thank you for uh, everyone who uh, has voted. I'm going to uh, close the poll now and share the results. So 43% of you uh, think that chlorophyll has a very big potential, uh, closely followed by leaf area index. Actually, this is not a big surprise for us here because we also believe those two analytics are extremely powerful. Indeed, they require to know the crop type uh, to be able to process them. But once you have them, you can get very close to uh, nitrogen uptake and biomass. We'll see that in a, in a few slides. Actually, those analytics are really great, but they are just the first part of the story. To be able to move along uh, beyond pure observation up to diagnosis and then farming recommendation, you actually need to integrate other information together with those observations. So you need uh, the information of the soil, the moisture content of the soil, the crop model, the weather information, and so on. Uh, that's the reason why we will serve those analytics through an API in order to ease the integration of those observations within your existing workflows so that you can focus on what you do best precision agriculture services and agronomy. Verde gathers four main benefits. The first one is that it relieves the pain point around using satellite imagery for agriculture. The second is that it provides increased frequency. The analytics are also very easy to merge with other information. And finally, they are a gate to improve and enrich your agriculture portfolio. So the first benefit lays in an increased ease of use. You have the cloud and the cloud shadows that are very well managed, as you can see on those image. And uh, as such, you have the, the images which are useless are, are filtered out. More, you get images which are directly clipped to the field. The second benefit is that we manage to detect and to remove the haze. So any useful pixel can be leveraged for your service. This translates into more images than a better revisit rate over your field. The third benefit is coming from the extreme consistency we achieve um, despite the different sensor we are using. The analytics can be very easily merged with AgroMeteo model because of this very good stability. On the graph here, you have LAI over six fields during the an entire crop cycle, sorry. As you can see, the points, despite they are coming from different sensors, they are lining up very well. And more, I can start to compare the fields once against another one. For instance, if I take field number three, it features a much higher uh, vegetation compared to field four. And last but not least, uh, with Verde, I have a very high correlation with biomass. We have done extensive field surveys, and here is a part of the numerous results we've got here over nine fields of rapeseed. And there we made ground measure all along the growing cycle. So on the left-hand side, these measures are compared with NDVI, and on the right-hand side, they are compared uh, with leaf area index. And as you can see, the leaf area index is a very good proxy to biomass. The correlation of leaf area index to biomass is better, especially late in the cycle when NDVI saturates and miss variability. During the ground measurement campaign, we also measured the uptake. 
On the left hand side, we compare this end uptake with the NDRE, which is a vegetation index, including the red edge. Uh, and that property makes it a better rendering chlorophyll compared to NDVI. On the right hand side, we have an analytic that we obtain by multiplying chlorophyll and leaf area index. Again, the biophysical parameter approach describes much better the end uptakes. So we have now a second poll. Here we go. What is the benefit you value most about bio biophysical parameters? Is it field clipping, proper declouding, and cloud shadow masking, haze removal? consistency of analytics regardless of the satellite image or the correlation to biomass and, and uptake. So like for the first poll, you may submit your answer, please. A few more seconds and I will close the poll and share the results. Okay, thank you everyone for answering. So here the biggest winner are consistency of analytics regardless of the satellite image and the correlation to biomass and, and uptake. Again, not a big surprise for us here. Uh, that's really the two benefits we've been hunting after when we developed this, um, this uh, processing chain uh, behind Verde. Actually, I would like to now get you through a quick live demo of these different analytics. So we are here on a small demo interface that we prototyped quickly to allow you to visualize how the API works. Let's start from scratch. When you subscribe to Verde, you define the packages that you need for your precision agriculture services. You can see these packages summarized here with the satellites, the cloud cover, and the analytics that you selected at the beginning. Let's now add a new field. I'm taking here a big parcel, a big field. I remove the little farm here to avoid the noise. And let's assume that we want for this giant field we want to attach the crop which will be soybean and now we will subscribe this field to information of the past so for soybean it will be last season from the 1st of May roughly up to the end of October So, as you can see, the system found 79 acquisitions matching my criteria, and it will now start to process them on the fly and add them to the stream. While the, the, the computer, in fact, are doing all this, I propose that we move to an existing field to get a closer look at the different Verde analytics. Here, I get the entire growth cycle with a green cover fraction. As you can see, I'm browsing through the different dates. I can also switch to leaf area index. And there I start to get really the dynamic of the field and the dynamic of the growth. Here I have the start of the vegetation. Here is when the crop creates its vegetation biomass. Beginning of July, the field is reaching the maximum vegetation for, a pro, uh, for announcing the flowering stage. And then I have two months of full vegetation. And there we can really see that the farmer did a great job because uh, there is not much variability in the field. And then end of August is the start of senescence, 
when actually the farmer can stop uh, irrigating and plant the harvest. Again, what I think is still remarkable there is how consistent the curve is, despite the maps are coming from different satellites. And in case you want to just check and understand better a map, you can always come back to the original satellite image. Now, let's try to compare this field with three other fields, one of corn and two, uh, two of soybean. So here I have the different curve of leaf area index again, and uh, it's interesting to compare the fields that feature the same crop. One field starts to develop faster than the other one, but eventually the two fields are catching up. And after I can compare those fields with the soybean fields, and here we can clearly see the difference of pattern between the two species. And I can also lead the same exercise of comparison over a single field, but uh, over different seasons. So one year, two years, three years, or even 10 years if I want. So now let's come back to the little, to the giant field we have uh, started to process. And I think that's the demo effect because I don't have the images. Let me refresh this quickly. So I don't know what happened. I have one image. I propose that we move along with the presentation and we will check at the end of the, um, at the, end of the presentation uh, the progress of the production. So we, we package Verde around two main pillars. The in-season is meant for rapid reaction in case something is going wrong in your field. And the off-season gives you the opportunity to review several cycles and to spot recurring patterns to adjust the farming strategy over the long run. For instance, in this part of the field, it's always very low in yield. So I decide to stop putting money in seeds, putting money in fertilizer, putting money in water, and I just abandon this one. So again, the difference between the two is really tactical reaction for in-season and strategic reaction for off-season. Thank you, Charlotte. So let's do a quick survey around off-season. Would you use off-season option for your service? That's the uh, question. Then you can submit either yes in the short term or yes in the longer run after some R&D, or I do not see a real use case there. So I'm going to leave, let you a few more seconds and thank you because we always have a high participation from the attendees. So I'm going to close and share the results. So big 61% of you uh, see a potential in the off-season analysis after some uh, R&D around it. That's uh, again very in line with what we, we believe on our side. Uh, some people are already using off-season analysis, uh, but that's uh, not a, a big part of the market and uh, a big part of you see um, a potential after more work. We still have a few, uh, I don't see the percent, sorry, a few people that believe there is low potential. So more on the tactical side compared to the strategic part of the precision agriculture uh, business. So we, we have several options uh, within Verde in order to match uh, a wide range of use cases. First, we have the leaf area index and the chlorophyll. So those analytics, they are uh, dependent on the crop type and they are available in this first version of Verde for wheat, canola, barley, corn, soybean, almonds, potatoes, cotton, 
sunflower, sugar beets, rice, sugarcane, alfalfa, and grass. Uh, the F cover and the field image, they are available regardless of the crop, so you can use them for uh, any other crop. We have the choice in terms of special sources for this V1 of Verde between Sentinel-2, Landsat-8, Spot-6 and 7, and Pleiad. And there, uh, the beauty of it is that when you subscribe to Verde, you define your cloud cover tolerance, and the, uh, as uh, there is an automatic cloud masking, you are going to get only the images that are matching your criteria. And the good news here is that the calculation of the rate of cloud is not done on the basis of the full image, but really with the intersection with the field. So this maximizes, again, the number of results we can get as valid images for your service. In terms of deliverable, we have the choice between analytic display and statistics. Analytics should be selected if you want to process and compute further work out of those uh, Verde uh, analytics. Uh, you should select display if your objective with Verde is really to, to show something, to, to, to feature a map uh, in your portal. And statistics are always useful, especially if you want to set up some kind of alerts to have a look at uh, a field instead of another one. And last but not least, in terms of licensing, you have the choice between two licenses, the commercial one, which is a standard one to allow you to do your business as you do today. So it's uh, uh, for, for, for business business use. And the R&D license, uh, which is ideal if you want to test and prototype new services. First, because there is a big discount attached to it. And second, because we open in this license the right for you to make communication around what you find during your R&D. So if you want to do marketing, if you want to attend a conference and show uh, what you've done, it's totally feasible in this license. Now we will enter into the technical part of this webinar and we have prepared four use cases in order to show you how Verde can contribute to precision agriculture. So we're going to go through two use cases. So please vote for uh, the one you prefer. How to make a good variable rate distribution map, how to prescribe the right amount of nitrogen to spread, how to determine the water need, or how to access the risk of lodging. A few more seconds and I will close the poll and share the results. Thank you to everyone. So we have the two winners of this session is how to make a good variable rate distribution map and how to determine the water need. So I'm going to present those two use cases to you. And it's funny because this morning was uh, also the water, but the nitrogen got also a good, uh, a good result. So we presented those two ones this morning. So today, a lot of use cases around satellite imagery are around the distribution of a given input within the field. And typically, for this use case, the farmer case in the system an average quantity of input per hectare and the portal will return a map displaying how to distribute this amount in the field, taking into account the variability. On this example over a field of wheat in April, late in the season, you can see that NDVI has reached saturation because the canopy is closed. So using a standard segmentation tool, like the one of S3, uh, as you can see, we don't grasp the variability very well with NDVI. Whereas with leaf area index, we are able still to capture this variability and to have a more relevant distribution map. 
So Verde can provide the LAR map at the date of your choice and even at the, in, a, in, a, in a fashion of time series. So to replicate this example, you just need the field boundaries, the crop type, and the average quantity of inputs. And then your customer will get a prescription map to distribute their input proportionally to the local amount of biomass. We're going to switch this one that was not retained and go directly to the water need. So I think the, um, the water is uh, actually one of the oldest use cases in agriculture. And today, I believe it's one of the most beautiful examples we have of uh, the usefulness of data fusion between technology like satellites, like the weather, like machinery data, or IoT measure, and also agronomic conversion tables. Basically, we're going to present today a rather simplistic approach on this big question of uh, water. And to get um, an irrigation recommendation, you need to calculate the water need. And from it, you're going to remove the water, which is actually available to the crop at a given point in time. The water need is obtained by multiplying the standard evapotranspiration and the crop coefficient. So that one is calculated, in fact, thanks to the F cover. And there is a robust conversion method which has been established by FAO, in fact. And this one is really helpful to translate very easily F cover into crop coefficient. Then the available water in soil is calculated with the amount of effective rain together with the quantity of water brought by irrigation and the capacity of the soil actually to store the water. So here is an example of dynamic calculation of the crop coefficient based on the F cover. So in black here, you can see the theoretical F cover for the crop. And at each new image, we calculate the F cover and we readjust dynamically the crop coefficient. So as you can see, I can have a dynamic adjustment of my crop coefficient, and I can retrofit on the spot all the new measure to readapt in the equation we've just seen uh, the water uh, amount that we need to bring. So it's really an approach based on the budget of water. And I hope, and that's just a personal comment, that you appreciate the work spent in animating this slide because it has requested a lot of time from me. So how to replicate this? Um, basically, the main point is uh, the F cover that can be brought by Verde. And then with the field boundaries, the crop type, the date of sowing, the rainfall, the water from irrigation, uh, the evapotranspiration of reference, and the, an estimation of the water storage capacity, you can, you can get going on, uh, on bringing a water recommendation to your customers. And, and that allows to reassess the water budget on a daily basis. And it's also something that you can compute at the scale of the pixel. And this is really interesting because it opens the gate to variable rate irrigation if the equipment of the farmer allows to do it. In practice, however, we measured that it, this, uh, this method is not always bringing savings of water, but uh, when it does not, it allows to really bring the water at the specific moment where the plant was missing it. I will now go back to the demo to see if we have better luck with the um, results. I'm refreshing quickly the interface. And in between, ta we have all the curve that was processed in a few minutes. So I think it was a little bug. We had to refresh a little bit the, um, the interface. So again, not a lot of uh, time requested to, to produce all the images. So I'm switching the last use case you did not select about the lodging risk. And I would like to tell you that we will carry on our work with those use cases and we will organize regular webinars to, uh, to, to dig further into the potential of Verde. 
So don't hesitate to really take the survey that we, you will receive after this webinar in order to indicate which one are the use cases you would like to see. And also, if you have one use case that you would like to explore on your own, don't hesitate to reach out to us because we are very sensitive to creative people and we can be a very reliable uh, and engaged partner. I uh, thank you very much for your attention and I would welcome all your questions. Thank you, Charlotte, for the presentation. We do have uh, many questions this afternoon. I will start with the first question we received from Alan, who is asking, how did you validate your vegetation indicators? So that's a, a very key, uh, that's a very quick question for us. We have spent a lot of effort in order to validate these different crop analytics. So at the beginning, we, we used a direct method. And for this, we led uh, destructive ground measurements locally. And we took the leaves and put them in a printer in order to, uh, to measure um, the surface of leaves and see uh, how to, to correlate that together with the pixel response. And we also measured the chemical dosage of chlorophyll. And I must admit that those campaigns, they were extremely time consuming and very expensive. So we also uh, put in place uh, indirect method of validation. And with this one, in fact, we measured the, directly with destructive measurement again, biomass and end uptake, because we knew that the analytics we were searching for were highly correlated to those. Uh, and on top of that, we also used some uh, optical ground system like LAI 2000 or SPAD. But uh, when we used those ones, we had to take into account the fact that um, they, uh, they, they make assumption on the uh, foliar angle. So we did all those sampling in combination with measure from uh, optical reflectance at different altitudes in order to see if there was any bias induced by the, um, the resolution. So we took some capture of the, from the soil, uh, from space, and also we used drones and airplane in order to change the resolution and robustify the output you, we, we get in, uh, in our system. So all those campaigns, they started in the late 90s and they are carried out uh, every year, they, they carry on. I did not mention that uh, because it was attached to the use case around fertilization, but we have a service in France called Farmstar where we provide the amount of nitrogen to 16,000 farmers every season. Uh, and together with the Agronomic Institute, that is our partner for, for this service, uh, we have a lot of effort to, to, to carry on those measures and, and make sure that we, uh, we remain uh, and we perfect uh, the accuracy of our analytics. Thank you. Then we have uh, a next question from Sky who is asking what topography model, DEM, do we utilize with Verde? So the DEM we utilize with Verde, with the topography we utilize to, to correct uh, Verde. I'm having a look at uh, the technical expert in the room. I will, it's, uh, it's the SRTM. It's enough to modelize the slope, which are extremely important to uh, modelize uh, the sun uh, illumination. Thank you. Then we have a next question from Demir, who is asking, I'm wondering how the models to estimate these products are built, which focus on ground truth data, modeling errors, and validation. So for this specific question, I will give the mic to our agronomic expert that will explain a bit more how we build the different models. So hello, everyone. So to answer this question, so we use a combination of different model. Um, so different model um, to estimate or simulate the reflectance at the leaf and canopy level. So it's a combination of ProSale. Uh, after that, we develop our own model to have a reflectance base on soil. And we use a um, low trend for the atmospheric uh, modeling. Uh, so for sure, uh, the ground truth, uh, Charlotte already talked about this ground truth data that we use. So we use the different uh, campaign and operational campaign that we have in France, in Europe and all over the world to validate 
uh, this data. So just for instance, for the rapeseed, every year we have more than uh, 250 uh, field measurement located uh, of biomass uh, since 2004 now. And we do this kind of campaign every year with our uh, great agronomic partner. And for the modeling error, so I could send you more information with white papers, but the idea of this modeling errors, for sure, it depends on the sensor that we use. And for sure, more spectral band we have, more precise we have a result. Um, so in the validation, I already uh, talked about this with the ground truth campaign that we um, process. And as per the white papers, uh, they are available for download on our website on the biophysical parameter page in case you wanted further clarification on those models. Thank you. So then we have the next question. Uh, is the data set for LAI available for all countries and biomass crop types? Uh, yes, so the uh, LAI is available for all countries and so is the F cover and so is the chlorophyll content. So that's the beauty of satellite and that's also the beauty of our model. We made the effort to modelize uh, the, the, soil, uh, the optical soil properties all around the planet and that's now something done. Uh, the other, yeah, there was two questions in the question, uh, Gael, can you remind me the second part of it? So it was global for the countries, and there was another part. I don't have the the questions anymore. The question anymore in front of me. So I think yeah, the, the second part of the question was for the crop. So I mentioned that in the earlier in the webinar, we have thirteen crop available for leaf area index and chlorophyll, and you have potatoes, you have wheat, barley, rapeseed, soybean, sugarcane, sugar beet alfalfa, grass, uh, almond, citrus, and I'm forgetting one, uh, I don't remember, and cotton, cotton is the last one. Thank you. Then the uh, next question about API, can we integrate the solution in our platform using an API? Uh, that's exactly the purpose of Verde. So you, with Verde comes together with a swagger, which is in fact the standard documentation that you give to a developer in order to interconnect Verde within a platform or a portal. And uh, again, uh, we have shown a demo in a, in a mock-up interface. Uh, th this interface is really meant for demonstration purpose, but the beauty of Verde is really this API delivery model which is allowing uh, the, the portal providers to mix and blend Verde inside their workflow in a very uh, convenient and automatic fashion. Thank you. The next question is from John, who is asking, why don't you use vegetation index like NDVI? Um, that's, a, that's a very good question because actually NDVI is much more easy to calculate. So it's, a, it's a subtraction of bands uh, and it's good because it gives a relative information on the vegetation development. So you, with NDVI you're going to know where there is more and where there is less vegetation, but it disables the capacity to know how much. Um, NVI is great also if the canopy is still open. As soon as it's uh, closed, we have the saturation effect we've seen in the uh, first use case about variable rate di distribution map. And actually, again, when, when we started in the agriculture market, we had the need to combine satellite imagery from different sensors because at the time there was so little satellite in the sky, we really needed to combine images from different sensors in order to have a decent revisit. And more, as we have this partnership with Agronomic Institute and we wanted to bring meaning and uh, go further in terms of agronomy together with them, we needed to find a consistent way to translate pixel into observation that had a physical meaning around the plant. So much more complex. We mentioned the model uh, quite uh, quite a lot already at the beginning of the, the questions. But so it's much more complex, but the, the output you get is much easier to, to mix and merge with other data to cater a precision agriculture service. Thank you. The next question is from Gordon. How 
long does it typically take from creating a new field to having all images available? So the time between creating a field and getting all images of, uh, available, in fact, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's an, I will say it depends. I am really sorry that we had this problem during the demo because this morning we made exactly the same one and it took uh, really two minutes to get all the acquisitions. So there, are, there was a little bug. Generally, when we showcase Verde, customers are impressed with uh, the speed of uh, of processing. Now, of course, it depends if you are launching uh, 1,000 uh, fields together over uh, six years of archive or just one field over uh, a full season. So it depends. In average, I would say one field one field would be uh, would be approximately one or two minutes for, for a season maximum. And as it is on the cloud, all the processing, we have the capacity and the structure and the architecture that if there are more and more uh, fields, if the workload becomes too big, then automatically there is a scaling of the number of computers which is used so that it does not damage the performance of the system. So um, I don't remember, Benjamin, I think we produce just for a test all the field we have in Farmstar, which is, uh, 700, 790,000 fields, and I think it took, uh, yeah, I think it, it took less, uh, it took a few hours only. Thank you. The um, next question is from Demir. Do we get access to the raw data, ideally cloud mask and atmospherically corrected in addition to the end products? Uh, so it depends what you call the raw data. So within Verde and at no cost, on top of every single analytics, we provide what we call the field image. But this is really a kind of a high resolution, quick look of the image. We do not provide the raw data uh, with uh, with Verde. However, we are launching a new service, I think in a few days uh, from here, which is called One Atlas Data, where you're going to have access to these kind of features. Thank you. The next question is from Dimitri. How do you deliver 2.5 meter data if most of your imagery is not at 2.5? So, the question on resolution, I, I need to be very clear on it. We have Landsat, which is uh, imaging with 20 meter resolution, Sentinel 10 meter resolution, um, Spot uh, 1.5 meter resolution, and Playad 50 centimeter resolution products. And first we started to produce the map at the resolution of the original sensor. And when we were using those in Verde, it was not very nice, not neither very easy uh, to perform calculation and further work. So to uh, achieve 2.5 meter, we do not recreate any information. So you will not gain more information. We just make sure that the sampling is consistent re regardless of the sensor. So you can use the same algorithm and the same computing method from one sensor to another one. Now it's a, it's a parameter we, we set up in, uh, in the API. And uh, if it's something that uh, you want to change, we have uh, developed Verde in a very agile manner. So we are able to leverage feedback uh, and change uh, things in a quite uh, quick turnaround. Thank you, Charlotte. The next question is from Elizabeth, and she's asking for which crops is the irrigation recommendation available? Uh, for which crop? So again, to be very clear, with Verde, we do not provide the recommendation. The intention of Airbus is really to stay on its seat within the value chain and to make sure that you don't waste time doing something that is painful, which is managing images. So with Verde, we do not cater the recommendation turnkey. We will serve you the F cover. So that's the key root of this use case around irrigation and the beauty of F cover is that it's sensor agnostic. So you can basically cater the service we've shown for any crop. Thank you. The next question is from Lola. She's asking, can we use Verde for vineyards? 
can we use Verde for vineyards? That's a beautiful question. And um, so we have a lot of R&D done already on vineyards and uh, we will send you just after the webinar, the survey I was mentioning for the use cases. And in there, there is also a question about what are the next crops for which you would like to get the leaf area index and the um, and the chlorophyll. And I must say that uh, the um, the vine was also mentioned this morning. So I think it will be put on uh, on the top of our list for the next editions. Uh, and again, um, Verde is done in a very agile fashion with sprints which are quite short. So um, this doesn't mean that you need to wait for two months before uh, we release this crop. Thank you. The next question is from Alberto. He's asking, what is the better index when you want to take a nitrogen problem? For the nitrogen problem, uh, allow me to get quickly back in my presentation. The two best indexes we use, in fact, so how is this animation, are, um, so that's the one. So the best is to use uh, the leaf area index. And that one is used in order to uh, modelize the biomass. And in fact, uh, the corresponding amount of nitrogen you need to reach the biomass and the protein uh, of your, uh, your objective. And then we use a combination of leaf area index and chlorophyll to uh, derive from it the nitrogen uptake by the plant. And basically, the full story is so to subtract uh, the target, well, the, the N already taken, from the target and uh, and also the end which is already available in the soil and this gives you the recommendation of what you should bring uh, to the field in terms of nitrogen. Thank you. Then the next question is following. What are your commercial terms? Do you charge a subscription fee based on farmer community type, rich, middle income or marginal? So the, the business model around Verde is, um, is, a, is a business model meant like a sushi menu, if I can express myself like this. So you can pick and choose the analytics you want and the satellite you want. And this just sums up. Um, meaning so, you have some layers which are extremely cheap, allowing to really have uh, something which is cost effective. And uh, so that's... a uh, mostly with a F cover, which is uh, already useful for a lot of use cases as we've seen with, uh, with irrigation. Um, the, the price structure is a, an amount of, uh, of cents or euros per hectare and per season for each of the, the item on the sushi menu. And uh, what we've done is that we intentionally did not define what is a season. If you have, for instance, uh, fields with permanent crop, you can define the season being one year. If you have a sunflower or if you have wheat, you can define the few months over the period that is relevant for your area. So that part of the season is, this, is left intentionally very um, flexible. So it can match your current offering, basically. And on the off season, it is exactly the same structure and actually the same price. But this price is not for one season only, but for three seasons, because we estimate that you need at least three seasons in order to be able to compute uh, different statistics and uh, identify persistent patterns over years. So if, uh, if you follow me, it means that the off season is three times cheaper compared to the in season. And you had a question also around uh, the, the discount scheme. I was mentioning the R&D. Uh, the R&D license is uh, half the price of the commercial license. Thank you. Next question from Jonathan, who is asking how much the agronomist can save in cost of produc production using Verde. How much an agronomic an agronomist can save in term yeah. of uh, in term of cost of production? Yes. Um, I will start with what I believe, and I may give the mic to uh, my colleague Benjamin right after to complete. My belief is that there is a very good use case and uh, quite simple to achieve uh, with, uh, with Verde, which is where to scout and where to do the sampling. 
So some agronomists, they spend a lot of time in order to do those collections, bring them to the lab and uh, try to optimize their strategy. So that's definitely something you can do uh, easily with, with Verde. Uh, the other thing is, again, an agronomist is someone good in agronomy and maybe not so much in remote sensing. So with Verde, he can forget about uh, what it means to download an image, what it means to mask the cloud, and what it means to calibrate the image and correct them. And it just have the ready material in order to cook the service the way he wants. No, I don't think we have done some uh, some measurement in terms of uh, amount of money on, on the question. It's difficult to estimate. It depends on the use case that the agronomist is pursuing. Thank you. Next question from Jeffrey, who is asking if the API is online now, and if so, where can the documentation be found, and how might we go about trying it out? So, uh, for this question, I propose that uh, this gentleman is sending us a small email. We have the swagger ready, and we can definitely put in place a demo account for him. Thank you. The next question was about the outputs and, and asking if they can be downloaded. Uh, yes, the output can definitely be downloaded, and that's that's even more uh, that's recommended, in fact, in the in the workflow uh, of how Verde works. Thank you. One attendee is asking how many years of archive images do you have? So today, the archive which is readily available like this is the Sentinel and the Landsat archive because we we have it there and it's already produced. Now I was mentioning the initiative of One Atlas. Uh, so with One Atlas, we are producing all our archive for Spot 6 and 7 uh, and Pleiad and putting it available um, batches per batches. On top of it, if you have a specific request over a given place, we can definitively um, search for the archive, produce it quickly, and get it in the system so you can benefit it if, the, if it's that you want. And to be honest, I quite love this question because I mentioned we are the oldest satellite operator in the world, so we also have images uh, in the basement of our building uh, which are dating late in the past with spot four or spot five. Um, we are actually thinking about how can we de-dust all this archive and bring it to live for this application and also other ones because they contain an information that Sentinel don't have and no one else has, in fact. Thank and my you. Co my colleagues are making fun of me because I'm getting emotional on the, on the archive. <laughs> it's okay to have emotions. The, um, Fabiano is asking, are new products to be included in Verde in the future? uh so that's uh the new products on the list for verde so definitely we will carry on adding new crops but that's kind of the normal uh, normal business for our um, developers what we do have in mind is to try to get closer to biomass and to nitrogen uptake so even go above bare LAI and bare uh, chlorophyll content to provide this. So that's in the pipe. We also have some work uh, around uh, time series. So when I say so, it's in fact, again, sometimes there is a cloud or sometimes an image is missing. The capacity to use uh, the cloud uh, computing power to project the curve and recreate the missing information. And uh, again, is a very agile process around Verde. If you have a specific idea, uh, it's really a, a service we have prototyped to date with six early adopters that were giving re regular feedback on, uh, on what we were doing and testing the service. If you do have an idea and uh, something in mind, don't hesitate to propose your idea. And I think it's also a question that you have in the survey. Thank you. We're going to take uh, last question because it's already uh, top of the hour. One attendee is asking, I wonder how frequent field cloud-free observations are obtained over certain areas, for example, Scotland. Do you have information on that? 
So over Scotland, I think it, uh, Scotland is definitely a, a place where it's a bit challenging to obtain a cloud-free coverage, I must recognize. And obviously the, um, the, the um, what's the name, the, um, the performance we get in terms of cloud-free coverage is uh, very variable depending on the region owners. We have estimated a global average that with uh, Sentinel, Landsat, Spot and Pleiad, we have uh, approximately uh, one image cloud-free every 10 days. And again, on specific Scotland, I need to check with our tasking team. I think it would degrade to, uh, to 15 days, but it's, uh, I need their confirmation on this point. Thank you. Maybe one more real quick question. Um, is there a limit for area download or processing? the limit of area download or processing i mean uh, that will be your portfolio huh? that your will be your 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 po how deep your pocket is to pay for it but no i mean again the infrastructure is very scalable so uh, we are not afraid of uh, very big areas we've done some tests which are absolutely uh, striking okay thank you i think it's time to wrap up charlotte Thank you, Gail, very much for, for today, as usually. And thank you, everybody, for uh, your time and for attending this webinar. Thank you, Charlotte. And um, like you said, thank you, everyone, for attending. You will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. On behalf of Airbus and our presenter, thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.